Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the more advanced palette features in Magic Q. We're going to talk about how linked palettes work. We're going to talk about expanding palettes, and we're going to talk about replacing palettes within a Q stack. So we have the Chauvet demo show loaded up here. We have some very simple fixtures to play with. We're going to use color as an example in this video, but just note that all of these features are available for all of the palettes and all the attribute sets. So whether it's a beam, intensity, position, or color palette, you always have the option to expand, link, or replace any palette in any attribute set as needed. So to get started, we're going to use our spots here. I'm going to grab our spots. We're going to turn them on, and we're going to create a very simple color palette. So to do this, we're going to use red and blue, which we already have red and blue palettes that were auto-generated by the desk when we patch the fixtures. And we're just going to choose red, and we're going to tap even odd, and we're going to hit blue. We'll hit all to make sure we get all our fixtures in there, and then we'll hit record and pick a new color palette. Because we used red and blue in there, are thumbnails for red and blue, the desk was able to guess on a red and blue thumbnail for us. And then we can give this a name of red and blue. Now, you may notice something a little different here in the corner of this palette, where we have a little C for color for all of our color palettes. You'll notice this one says CL. And if we view this palette, we can see what's different in it. So we'll click the palette. We'll go up top to view palette. And if we look at what's contained in this palette, rather than seeing values, we see references, just like we would see in a queue that used a palette. We have a little tick mark, and we have the name of the palette that's being used. What we've just created is a reference within a palette. Just like if we were to write this into a queue right now, and we view this queue because we used a palette, you see that we have the reference listed in the little white tick mark in the corner. So what's actually happening here, now that we've created our red and blue queue, is we have created a reference to a reference. So what's happening is this queue is asking red and blue, what color should I be? Well, red and blue doesn't know because red and blue doesn't contain any information. So red and blue, respectively, for each fixture is asking red and blue what color it should be. What this means is any change to the source palettes, so the red or the blue, is not only going to change the red and blue palette, but also the red and blue queue. As an example of that, if I was to turn on our queue here, we'll see as we clear out, that's our red and blue queue. Pretty simple. If I was to come in here and choose our red palette, and we were to modify this and say make it yellow, make our change, we'll hit record, we'll touch the red palette to update it. It's going to ask us, are we sure? We're going to say yes. Once we do that, if we clear out, you'll see our red and blue queue is now actually yellow and blue. If we go back to our red and blue palette, it as well has become yellow and blue. So the change made to red, because red and blue is a reference to red, or half of a reference, because the other half is referencing blue, has updated the red and blue palette, which in turn has updated the red and blue queue. When using this, especially for color, when you're creating multicolor looks and multicolor palettes for songs or, or scenes or for different looks in an event, and using just your solid colors and your head selections to create those multicolor palettes and keeping them as a linked palette means that when you get on site, rather than updating all of those different multicolored palettes one at a time, all you should have to do if they're all linked is update your basic solid color palettes and everything else will update with it, just as we saw here. So to show you that again, we can fix that by hitting red and blue. We'll repair our red palette. We'll make it show red again. And again, we'll hit record, we'll update the red palette, we'll say yes. And now red and blue is back to red and blue, as is the queue itself. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, it's very easy to accidentally create a linked palette. You can always break the link of the palette by clicking the palette in the palette window, holding the shift button, and you'll see a button up top center here that says unlink palette. As soon as we do that, if we view the queue while we do that, so we'll go to view palette and we'll see the palette here. You see, again, it has the references and it has the names of the palettes. As soon as we click on link palette, the little L is gone, so the link is gone, and you see that the contents of the palette have changed back to actual values. So this palette is now independent of the solid red and the solid blue palettes. Changes won't affect it anymore. 
So a really powerful feature. Um, again, it can be used with position and beam as well. It's great in beam to use for focus for gobo wheels. You only need to make one focus palette for gobo wheel one, one for focus palette for gobo wheel two. And then you can link those into your gobo palettes if you choose. Again, it makes updating very quick on site. Uh, great for positions as far as stage positions go and using those within larger, more complex positions. Again, it reduces the amount of things you have to update when you get on site or should something change. The next thing we're going to talk about is the ability to replace a palette in a queue. So we'll keep using our spots for this example. So we'll turn them back on and we will write a quick little queue stack here. We'll maybe go from red to blue. Maybe we'll go to cyan. We'll go to green. Maybe we'll go to blue. And then we'll go back to green. We'll clear out. And now we have our little queue stack here. We'll make sure it's in queue timing. And we'll give these guys names so we can keep track of them. So this is red and blue. This is cyan. This will be green one because we have two green queues. This will be blue. And this will be green two. So I have two green queues in this playback. If I hit a point in my programming where, you know, I like green one, not a huge fan of green two. And I want to quickly replace that color with something else. Now, I absolutely could pull the queue back into the programmer and edit the queue and then update the queue. Or I could grab the thing, grab the fixtures, make the change and merge the queue. That, that all takes a little bit of time. The quickest way, if I know exactly what change I want to make, if I say I know that in queue green two, I don't want those fixtures to be green. I want them to become magenta. I can make that change really quick using re the replace palette option. So I can come into the palette window. I can have the fixtures I'd like to replace those on selected. I can hold shift while in the palette window and I can find the button up here that says replace palette. Once I choose replace palette, the desk is going to ask me, which palette would you like to replace? I'd like to replace green. It's going to ask me again, which palette would you like to replace it with? Well, I'd like my green lights to become magenta lights. And then it's asking me, where exactly would you like to replace this palette? Well, this playback. Click on that. And now it's going to ask me one last question. Entire queue stack or current queue? If I choose entire queue stack, both of the green queues, both green one and green two, are going to become magenta. If that's what I want, I can choose that. In this case, I'm happy with green one. I just want to change green two. So we're on green two here. So I can just say in the current queue, replace it. I can clear out. And you'll see green two has now become magenta and we've left green one untouched. So this is really powerful for replacing colors, replacing gobos. Uh, you can replace whole positions if you want. Say you have some specials that are on your guitar player and your guitar player and your bassist switch sides for the night for some reason. Rather than uh, frantically updating those palettes, you can go in and just say replace guitar with bass and the, the palettes will be swapped. So pretty cool feature. Um, not something you're going to use every day, but it's really nice to have it when you need it. The last feature we're going to talk about today is going to be the expand palette option. So as I mentioned, this is the Chauvet demo show. I have taken the liberty of changing out our park hands in the back that are normally conventionals for RGB pars. So if we look at the cues here and we look at what's going on in them for our chase and our RGB pars, you'll see we have pars and we have RGB values for all of them. Now that's great, but if we roll up to a venue and that venue has RGB white amber or RGB white or RGB UV, lime, all the funny colors they're putting in lights these days, fixtures, we're going to be at a bit of a disadvantage because those new fixtures aren't going to be included and those new colors in those new fixtures, I should say, are not going to be included in any of our cues. That's kind of a problem. So what we need to do is we need to first morph the fixtures, which is going to get us the right fixture type. So we'll release the desk here. We'll go to patch. We'll come in here to our RGB fixtures. We'll select them. We're going to choose head. We're going to go to Chauvet. And we'll choose one of the Ovation P56 FCs. So this is a RGB white amber lime fixture. 
we'll choose 10 channel mode. And then we will morph our generics to those new fixtures. So here's our Ovation 10 channels. If we wanted to view the fixture, we can edit current head and look at the channels. You see we have RGB, sorry, I misspoke, RGB amber line, as well as a virtual color wheel and color temperature that we didn't have before. So we have one, two, three, four new color attributes that we didn't have when we programmed the show. So now if we come down here and we hit go on our playback, we're going to get roughly what we programmed. You see that we're stepping through the colors. The colors are still there because the basic RGB information is there. But if we look at the queue itself, we still only have red, green, and blue values in the queue. So we need to expand our palettes. In order to do that, we need to put that new information into these palettes. Now we could regenerate these palettes for these fixtures, which is definitely doable, or we could manually add it. For this example, we're gonna manually add it. So we're gonna go to red, and you'll see when we click red, we get values for RGB, but we don't get any values for the other color attributes, for the color temperature, the lime, the amber. So we'll come in here and we'll turn these all down. And we'll quickly update our red palette. We'll go to green. We'll hit record. And again, we'll update our green palette. Go to blue. We'll hit record. And we'll update our blue palette. And then we'll go to amber finally. Hit record and update our amber palette. So we've updated all of our palettes. In theory, we haven't heard our chase. Our chase is still gonna work as expected, but we still haven't gotten that information into the queue. We've got it in the palettes. So if we were to click our red palette here for our ovations and go in and view the palette, you'll see now the palette contains all of that new information, but it hasn't made its way to the queue. If we go to the right queue, again, still just RGB. So this is where expand comes in. The ability to send new information in the palette to existing queues. It's very simple. We'll simply pick the fixtures we want to use. We'll pick the color window. We'll hold down shift and you see there's an option here to expand palette. Once we click it, it's going to expand palettes. And once we look at red, you'll see now red has amber and lime, but green doesn't. You have to do this for each palette that you want. So we'll arrow over, or we could select green there. Well, again, we'll hold shift and we will expand the palette. We'll go to amber, hold shift, expand the palette. And we'll go to blue again, hold shift and expand the palette. Now, if we look at our red, green, amber, and blue cues, you'll see that we've included the amber lime, the color temperature, the virtual color wheel in all of those cues. So now we have all of that spare information. And if we wanted to make adjustments, say to Amber, we wanted to be able to include the Amber channel in there. We just dial up Amber. We'll hit record and update our Amber. And now if we were to view our Amber queue and go to advanced, you'll see that we have a 255 value for Amber in there that we didn't have before. This is extremely powerful when you are switching fixture types, when you're adding new channels that didn't exist in your original programming. Extremely powerful for the touring scene. Extremely powerful, again, when fixture types change, and values change, or if you forget, even if you just forget to put a value in something, you can still expand a palette in a show. Hope you found this useful. As always, you can find us at www.campsaslighting.com.